Russia launched another large-scale attack against Ukrainian cities overnight on March 22, targeting Kharkiv, Zaporizhia, Kriby Rih, Dnipro, and Kropivnitsky. Explosions were also reported in Vinnytsia, Sumy, Ivano-Frankivsk, and Lviv Oblast. Zaporizhia's Dnipro hydroelectric station, Ukraine's largest hydroelectric power plant, was hit during a Russian missile attack against Ukrainian energy infrastructure, Ukrahydrenergo announced on March 22. According to Energy Minister Herman Halishchenko, several energy facilities were damaged by the missile attack. Zaporizhia nuclear power plant lost one power line. A Russian missile hit a trolleybus with people moving across the Dnipro hydroelectric power plant. DAM. An advisor to the mayor of Mariupol, Petro Andriyashenko. A Russian missile hit a trolleybus moving across the dam. There were people in the trolleybus. Ordinary civilians going to from work, he said. Local authorities say there is no threat of a dam failure, but acknowledge the blow to a key infrastructure facility. In addition, energy facilities in other regions of Ukraine were affected Ivano Frankivsk, Poltava, Sumy, Lviv, Khmelnytsky, Kharkov regions. Kharkov is completely without power. The air defense of the Kiev regime missed a very important and painful blow. Traffic across the Dnipro hydroelectric power plant has been completely restricted. This was reported by the patrol police of Zaporizhia. Traffic on the road crossing of the Dnipro HPP dam is completely restricted. Traffic is carried out through the arch bridge on Kortitsia Island. Also, through the new bridges and Kortitsia district. Please take this information into account when planning your route, the statement said Ukrahydrinergo denied the information about the discovery of a stain of oil products in Zaporizhia due to an oil leak from the Dnipro hydroelectric station. Putin needs refineries in Navopolatsk and Mazir of Belarus. Ukrainian drones may fly there. A tenth of fuel production in the Russian Federation has been paralyzed as a result of Ukrainian attacks. This is a serious blow to the Russian economy. The Charter 97 website spoke about this with Ukrainian military political observer of the information resistance group Alexander Kovalenko. Firstly, the shocks affected the export of Russian petroleum products, which is the main item in filling the Russian budget. Secondly, internal economic destabilization occurred, which is already manifesting itself very eloquently. It affected domestic civilian and commercial consumers. Gasoline prices are rising, queues are lining up for it in a number of settlements and in some places there is a shortage, Kovalenko added. However, the Russian authorities do not pay much attention to civilians, but if the commercial component begins to suffer, then this again is an impact on the budget that finances the war against Ukraine. Thirdly, a blow was also struck to the supply of fuel and lubricants to the Russian occupation forces. Here I will immediately emphasize that Putin will sacrifice anything. Civilians, commerce, he may not even fill ambulances, but everything will be sent to war. Damaged plants. Refinery stations and transport hubs currently do not provide the full volume of petroleum products processing as well as their transit. The length of delivery of fuels and lubricants increases. The Russian occupying forces are beginning to feel a progressive deficit, but the first signs are already happening against the backdrop of a collapse in exports and a deficit for domestic consumers. Such attacks are effective, they will continue, if only for the reason that the restoration of any of these oil refineries in itself is unacceptable. In addition, there are several refineries left in the near-affected area that should be taken out of operation, the expert said. Perhaps Russia will use the Belarusian oil refineries in Mazir and Navapolatsk for its needs. 
Is there a possibility that some unidentified UAV will fly to these objects? According to the expert, it is possible that Putin will use them, but they will not be able to compensate for the dozens of Russian refineries that have failed or are temporarily out of order. This will be some kind of situational compensation that will not have a critical impact on the resumption of supply to the domestic consumer in the Russian Federation or the occupying army. On the other hand, if this facility takes part in this kind of support and supply, then who knows? In Belarus, after all, there are partisans who act in the interests of the Belarusian people and not the Lukashenko regime. It is possible that something could happen there too, Kovalenko said.